question. And as glowing tributes continue uh, to stream in uh, over the, uh, the late Kenneth uh, Matiba, uh, we see a former Nakuru North Member of Parliament, Koegi Wamwere, who also worked closely with the late Matiba, has also weighed in his sentiments. Today, they all seem to have a problem with Kenyans who have been uh, very steadfast in, the, in maintaining and uh, uh, expressing their, uh, their political positions and principles. In this country, the government will uh, think better of you if you are one who controls and supports it blindly. If you, are, uh, if you, have, uh, if, if you have the strength of mind to be independent, then you become not just, you become an enemy of the government. And the government will treat you in a rough manner. And the least they do is to ignore, you know, is to ignore you and make sure that even if they are not attacking you, you don't have the legs to stand on and that finally you must collapse. That has been the fate of people who have dared be politically independent. And lastly, just a vote that we have been at the court ruling of the case. All right, and of course, we continue to have. Right, we continue to have that conversation here in studio with Wanyere Kihoro, who is the former Nyeri Town MP and chairman of the Independence Coalition. And let's just talk about the system we have in the country for honoring uh, heroes, the National Honors Award system. Uh, what do you think of it? And do you think it's as effective as it should be? I think uh, I asked the same question in Parliament uh, in 1999 or 2000 about who are the people who are honoured in this country, how many have been honoured in this country, and apparently like uh, they are heroes or mm -hmm. honourable people mm -hmm. whom people should emulate because of what they have done. I was, I was given a list from the office of the President, and it had a list of about 4,000 4, uh, 300, mm -hmm. and because I asked who are these people, then I was given a list of about half, actually foreigners, people who might be known to leaders in this country, and when they come in and wherever they go, whether in state house or in public offices, they are given all these honors. But the local ones that you are told are the honorable people who have been bestowed uh, with uh, EBS or bestowed with the CGH, mm -hmm or whatever other, or the Moran of mm -hmm. the Golden Spear and everything the else. And there all are quite of that. A, a variety mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are done from the office of the president. You find uh, that uh, there are a list of uh, people who have mainly been civil servants. People who are civil servants. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ask me whether they are the people that you are talking about when you talk about heroes, I'll tell you no. When you are, you are a civil servant, you can be a good person, you can be a dedicated civil servant, but there must be something, there must be a quality in you mm -hmm. that makes you a hero in this country. Mm -hmm. Just as much as even people in public life. Not everybody who gets elected to parliament becomes a hero. Not everybody who picked a jembe and went to the garden and dug it for one day became a, be, becomes a hero. So then how do we actually make sure that this process then, because I even remember the most recent when uh, these awards were being um, given during the last Mashuja Day celebrations and elicited really a grand public uproar uh, regarding the list and the people who received the, uh, those honours. So uh, what would be a prudent way of going about this? There is a National Honours and Awards Committee in place. Um, in your opinion, what, you see, what do you think you see, would make it foolproof? Quote in the year 2010, we started with the process of trying to identify who are the heroes by going for what was then called truth, justice, mm -hmm. and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. A process that would have been put on the table. People, uh, their, their previous activities, uh, might they have suffered? Mm -hmm. uh, do they deserve to be compensated? Mm -hmm. That we did, and uh, we basically made a mess of it. By the time the report was added in, 
by the late uh, uh, Kiplagat mm. in, I think, 2013 or 2014, mm. it was added to His Excellency the President. Mm -hmm. Nobody even has dared to talk about it again because it is a, a whole list of embarrassment of people who might have bribed their way mm. to get on the list. So I think it is something that um, should be done openly, publicly. People should be asked, whom do you recognize as a hero? Mm -hmm. And I think some of the people, because of now I, I got the sentiment from all the sides about yes. uh, what they think, yes. huh? they tell you that uh, if somebody has come out and uh, has got very good ideas about treatment of cancer, mm -hmm. where people should not go to India or be taken to, to South Africa mm -hmm. for treatment, maybe with this endowment mm -hmm. and a lot of money and set up a, a, a hospital, a hospice for treatment of cancer, mm -hmm. I would consider that person a hero. Right. So somebody who works for the saves. greater good. For the greater good of society. And there's some level of sacrifice. A also gallant involved. farmer. Yeah. Somebody who promoted tourism, like Matiba, why is a hero in many ways to mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. is because of how, even when he has picked the peak of civil service mm -hmm. as a, a permanent secretary by the 37, mm -hmm. he still has got the guts to say, I'm resigning. Right. I want to try my hand in uh, horticulture. Mm -hmm. I want to try my hand in hotel, mm -hmm. or, or, or hotel ship. Mm -hmm. He did that, and he did that with Augusto, and uh, that accompanied with very robust health at right. that point. Right. So that is why I would consider him a hero. Not anybody who just sits it out as time server. Mm -hmm. We'd set out for 10 years, 15 years until he retires. Right. And there are many that are not uh, bestowing on a <laughs> for. Okay. And some people would actually say that mm. the greatest way you can honor a hero mm. is by, you know, either emulating or upholding the cause that they were fighting for. Mm. For instance, Wang Wangari Mathai and her fight for a greener, uh, you know, conservation of the mm. environment and all that, that the greatest honor mm. would be to see that what she fought for and what she was, her agenda is mm. pushed forward. Yes. Uh, for the late Matiba, it would be democracy. Yes. So let's talk about that and honoring. What do you think um, the late Matiba's thoughts would be with regard to governance, today's governance in the country? I think um, Matiba will not be happy with the governance of this country. He sees it a, a lot, actually, in uh, his book, which I have here. Mm. And uh, it is called uh, Aiming High. Yeah. And uh, there is one paragraph I like there on uh, page 288 of the book, and I would recommend it for people to read and to get to know the thoughts of the man that right. we are mourning today. Right. And at page 288, Matiba himself talks about... Um, uh, about what he sees in government, how government should function. He says accountability in public affairs. Mm. There is nothing more important than that. He is the one writing. He is speaking from his grave now. Accountability in public affairs should at all times begin at the top. If he became actually president, that is what he is saying he would want to do. If you are not going to be accountable at the top, how do you... Exp if senior leaders are not honest trustworthy, unfair, they cannot provide an example to subordinate staff who may be struggling to enforce accountability at their levels. And if leaders are corrupt, they, are, they, 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 they lack more authority, and uh, this becomes a virus that spreads corruption throughout all aspects of national life. Corruption is at all time high in Kenya, at roadblocks in government offices, even in hospitals, and it is affecting us all. Mm -hmm. So, as I remember Matiba, he is a man who had high ideals in thinking about democracy. He is a man who was down to earth in our hospitals. Right. He is a man who was down to earth in our schools. He is a man who is down to earth on our roads. Mm. And that is where we, have, we should have now our heroes. They are created on the, on the public highway like Juan Wanyoni, who used to be a very good person, clearing vehicles, making sure there's no vehicle jam. That is the kind of person, I would, when, when he retired, we all found uh, what difference right. he was making on our travel every morning. Mm. So it is people who are good in farming, people who are good in hospitals, dedicated nurses, dedicated teachers, mm -hmm. people who are good in uh, road construction, right. people who have resisted corruption as right. they do their work. These are the kind of heroes that we should have in this country. Okay, and just let's listen to one more soundbite, even as we continue continue towards the end of our conversation this morning.
the loss of Mr. Matiba is irreparable to the Kenyan political fraternity. He is one of the very rare great leaders championing a lot of things in this country since his childhood. He has been a self-made person. I know him personally. I have stayed with him long nights and long months discussing about various things. He was a visionary leader. He was focused to everything good. He's a man of high moral values and great angelic manners. He loved his country more than he loved himself. He loved the people of his country more than he loved his own family. He has been very benevolent. He was filled with the milk of human kindness. I have known him particularly since 1991. Even during my childhood, I used to know him from our neighboring hotel over here, Castle Hotel. He was the owner, and he is the guy who promoted soccer in this country, particularly in the coast, being the chairman of the Kenya Football Federation. During his political activities, Mr. Matiba contributed a lot to this country. The only thing I can say on behalf of all the living political elite in this country, that we must not only borrow a leaf from his great history and his great contribution to, the, to, to our people, but we must know what Matiba stood for. <coughs> for as much as he championed the multi-party era with the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, he also is the cause of a new constitution in this country. He suffered a lot. He paid a dear price. In 1997, they tried to disenfranchise him by bringing the clashes, the Likoni clashes, Kaya Bombo, in order that the tourism market loses its value in the south coast and all the hotels fall in loss. And that is why they wanted to take away everything that Mr. Matiba did. Right, uh, Sheikh Balala there. What are your parting shots? Because we actually have to come to the end of this conversation. Mm -hmm. But as we wrap it up, um, mm -hmm. just looking back at how we remember um, the late Matiba, and what are your parting shots on this? Uh, I would say that uh, we need to have a second look on the kind of people who have been declared to be heroes in this country. We have got a day called Masuja Day. That is a day that should be a day of celebration. And uh, in my view, that should not be the day when the British declared uh, a state of emergency in Kenya. The Masuja Day should be the day when the Kenyan people stood on top of Kenya on the 1st of June. And I would also say that uh, when we look at our towns, whether it is Kisumu or Nairobi or Nyeri, our towns and the names we have given to the important roads should speak about our heroes. There is a time that used to happen. If you go to Nyeri town and if you go to, to, to a Doret, you find somebody like Lumuba. Young people today will ask who was Lumuba. You find Lumuba estate in uh, Nairobi. You ask why Lumuba and not Wanyeri. Now, the, the point is, mm. there is a time when this country had a, a, a Pan-Africanist spirit. Mm. And if you look at some of the, important, some of the impo more important roads in Nairobi, you find names like uh, Nyerere, even though he has given a more marginal road. You find it the other day, Jakaya Kikwete now was given a road that you wonder why he's being given a road before Madela. Nelson Mandela. If you go to Kampala, you find that they have got Nelson Mandela Stadium. In this country, we don't recognize a hero like that one. Even Winnie Mandela, we can't recognize. We can't recognize somebody like uh, Timothy. Maybe in uh, he's there in Mobasa. Right. Yeah. So, so those kind the, of the, ways. The, the, the kind of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Why? How come that we don't have a street in uh, Nairobi called Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Street? How come we don't? And he is one of my heroes, somebody who stood up to colonialism, somebody who stood up to bad mismanagement from the very beginning of the, in this country, who said no at a time when it was very difficult to say no, mm -hmm. and he was not quite understood by Kenyans at that point in 1966 mm -hmm. and 1967. Mm -hmm. So why don't we have even uh, Jogoro uh, renamed Jaramogi Ogiga Street?
in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. That is where we start. Mm -hmm. Let us have our heroes, major that it's roads not enough in this to country, just have it in, in, even in named, Kisumu, even right? hospitals, yeah, yeah. even okay. hospitals. All right. Like, like uh, why don't we have uh, the Ramogi Odinga Hospital oh, okay. in Nairobi? Why, why marginalize somebody like that or build that Kagia? All right. And you have a road like uh, Standard Street. What is Standard about? Uh, okay, so we actually have uh, to come to that. But thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us this morning. Uh, Wanyere Kihoro, uh, former Nyeri Town MP and chairman of the Independence Coalition. Asante uh, Sana for joining us. Thank uh, you. This